How's it going everybody? Today we're going to go outside and take a look at some fall leaves and I'm going to talk about the most technologically advanced space age jacket you've ever seen. Okay, so maybe we're not gonna look at too many, we're not gonna look at too many leaves. It's just getting really dark, really fast out here. And I'm just looking at it as I'm driving. As you know, I do a lot of tech videos. So it was kind of interesting that Alpergali, who makes these jackets, reached out to me until I realized how technically advanced this jacket is compared to everything else that is available out there right now. And the best part about this is the price is not astounding either. Wait till you hear what's inside this jacket. And I will go over some of those 30 some features back in the studio. Hey everyone, Mike Moo here. Today we're going to take a look at this pretty amazing jacket from Al Pergali. It's called the Aerogel Puffer. And Aerogel is, you probably might have heard about this before. It is a next level space age foam insulation that is the lightest man made substance in the world. It runs like $23,000 plus a pound. And it is in this jacket, in this campaign. Okay. Now, if I've got your attention, that's great. So Alpergali reached out to me and they said, hey, Mike, I've got a really advanced jacket that you might want to check out. And maybe you would be interested in one. And maybe you can share your thoughts about this jacket with your followers with the Kickstarter campaign. So the Kickstarter campaign starts November 19th. You're going to want to really pay attention to this because I believe this is one of the best outdoor jackets you can get just for the general person. Now, let's get into some of the details about this. And I will talk about my feelings about the jacket as well as talk about some of the technologies that they have put into this jacket that makes it so special. All right, so this jacket... The one that I've tested is the black jacket. I do believe it is a pre-production sample. I'm not 100% certain, but it is really dialed in. It was the most comfortable thing to put on, skin to skin, just off the bat. Very comfortable, and when I put it on, I definitely felt very warm in there. So their technologies are working. It doesn't matter if you don't know anything about aerogel, anything about graphene, or anything about insulation, or these name brands that are featured on this campaign. Just know that you put it on, you feel the warmth right away. And it, the comfort is just amazing. All right, now with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about this technology here. They feature Serona insulation, and I, look, I had to look that up because I'm not a textile person. I am not like a major, how shall I say this, major fashion conscious person. I do like a lot of things to be very practical, and if it looks good, where the two of them com combine, plus the third being affordable, is that us normal people can afford i think those are the sections that i'm most interested in and on top of this with the technologies that are, that are in here with all these buzzwords it really caught my uh, attention so if you back this right now or if you're one of the first lucky people tomorrow or november 19th you can get this advanced jacket for 200 dollars, which is amazing for because there's technologies in here that are not available in any other jacket that i am aware of that costs anywhere close to this price okay 
With that out of the way, Cerrone insulation is a type of insulation that uses like 30 some percent plant fibers. Pretty much it's good for the environment and also perf apparently it performs very well because I'm, I've tried it. It feels great. So that's one part of it. The other part is it has one millimeters of aerogel. That's nothing, but I guess it's enough to perform, to put that barrier of insulation between you, the environment, and you and the environment, right? So the, all this stuff comes together to resist the wind and the rain and the elements that might be coming through from the outside through the inside of the jacket. So it's not getting through this stuff. So... Outside, though, is a Teflon-coated fabric, all right, that repels, obviously, the wind as well. And so the, these technologies all work together. And as far as the rain's concerned, there hasn't been too much rain while I've had the jacket, but I did wear it outside, and obviously it feels like it's going to repel as much rain as it claims, which is 10,000 uh, millimeters of rainfall which means it's great for general use. You can use it out in just about any environment. And I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about rougher environments too, just to give you um, some idea. And then there's graphene technology that is, I believe it's infused right in the back where all this gold foil part is. So it looks like it has infrared reflecting technologies in that for the graphene, which they also use in highly advanced electronics as well. So that's pretty interesting that's in there. And it's supposed to give you cold protection up to negative 40 degrees Celsius cold protection. I believe that, all right, at least for the whole middle section. It hasn't gotten that cold around where I'm at here in California. And I haven't had a chance to take it out into <laughs> some crazy cold environments. Not that I really wanted to, but I had planned to go to Tahoe, but things just got in the way. So unfortunately, I was not able to test that. But I can tell you, this is an extremely warm jacket and warm and comforting, inviting jacket when I first put it on, in particular with skin to skin. It's way too warm for me to wear a long sleeve and wear this jacket at the same time here in the temperatures, which have only just recently just dropped down to 40 degrees early in the morning or late at night so in the morning you know it's a little bit chilly but it doesn't i, I wasn't able to super test that functionality of this all right so there's supposed to be 30 plus cutting edge features in here and I, that that is a lot to go through okay i'm not going to talk too much about the things that I really don't care about. So there are some big name brands in here that I, some of which I just went through. I don't think Aerogel has a name brand, or maybe it is. Maybe that's why it's called Aerogel. But there's four layers of insulation in here. Something that makes sense. It, it keeps the weather, the harsh weather conditions out. It's got graphene technology, check, right? I, I feel that really in the main midsection area and also where the back areas where where you definitely feel the heat it's got the bio-based serona fiber technologies in there that also i believe is also forms part of that insulation shell it's one of the four layers i believe you got the teflon coated shell yes some water does just bead off and it, but i found that over time it didn't bead but the water didn't get through so that's the teflon there it's got ykk zippers check i've double checked that too just to get that feeling, you can really tell and ensure that the zipper is going to work properly. I've also counted all nine pockets. They claim zero penetration, and I didn't get super amounts of rain on here. One thing that I could try, you can put a hose, I'm pretty sure if you put a regular hose and just pour water right down on it, or just, we have a big river rainstorm coming in next week, and I'm pretty confident that this atmospheric river is going to dump some good amount of rain. But it, I'm quite certain this is going to handle that no problem uh 360 degree torso protection i'm going to agree with that i felt warm all the way around it's got reflective night visibility stuff on it that part is there it is limited you're not going to glow up in the dark at all but if you do raise your arm particularly on the left hand side where this Al Alper logo is it's definitely going to reflect and you got some reflective logo parts so yes it's like you're walking around with some reflect on your body the quick hood adjustment works just perfectly fine it has a very comfortable fleece lined collar all very true wind guard high neck yes 
There was no wind coming in through there. Two-way frontal YKK zippers, yes. Underarm mesh ventilation. Okay, so that's only on the inside of the jacket. This, remember when I said this is good for just general everyday person? This is not good for general everyday super active people. There is not enough ventilation. This is not like a really active sport jacket. This would not be appropriate to go take out snowboarding is, is the main key that I'm putting in here. While you could, there's just not enough ventilation. You're just going to heat up way too much because the jacket's insulation is too good. You need some air ventilation. I'm just going to sweat up in there. And that's what I experienced. Around here, because it doesn't get super duper cold, walking around, I pretty much have to walk around unzipped. Otherwise, I'm just going to heat up. I'm just going to overheat up. So there's going to be some interesting things about that, which I'll get into as I'm going through here about the weather, the temperature range, which is a little bit confusing to me. I'm going to give feedback to them to tell them that this part probably doesn't make sense. But yes, there's over underarm mesh ventilation inside. So there is some of that. So it does help to curtail some of that. Adjustable Velcro cuffs check. 18,000 cycles of high abrasion resistance. Yeah, I believe that. this The outside of the jacket feels really durable, but not in the sense that it is so durable that it sounds like a record being scratched when you're moving. I don't know if you know what that means. Maybe you do. Maybe if you're old enough, you remember a certain denim pants. When you walk, it used to make a bunch of rubbing noises. So it is not to that level, but... This jacket will obviously last a while. All right, I, I can tell from the fabric. Built-in gloves for enhanced warmth. Okay, so that's something that I really didn't use yet. I'm going to have a look further into that. Maybe mine doesn't have it because it's probably pre-production or it's just so well hidden. I didn't see that. But it says it's in there. I'm going to check on that later. And it's got adjustable hem drawstrings. Easy to carry. I don't know if I, I put that as part of 30 advanced cutting edge features. I think these in particular, the main cutting edge features are the graphene, the aerogel, Serona fiber, and the Teflon technologies. And okay, so it's got some other stuff too, such as windproof, dirtproof, snowproof, environmentally friendly, temperature locking warmth, no shrinkage or deformation. That's good. It's also machine washable, chemical free. That's a big one anti-odor i haven't worn it so much that i got odors from it so i couldn't test that durable and built to last i believe that it's ultra light and thin okay that i disagree with this is not ultra light and ultra thin but maybe they're talking about maybe they're talking about the other one which is not the one i have i got the puffer one and that's the one that I was testing. I did not get the other one that is the graphene lightweight jacket. So maybe they're talking about that one. So while the jacket isn't heavy per se, because of what it does, I wouldn't call it ultra light and ultra thin. That's just not one of those things. It's not something that I, when I have it on, I know that I have it on. We'll put it that way. It's not what I consider it ultra thin. Okay, so negative 40 degrees centigrade. Or negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure. I'm a little confused about this whole section over here. I'm going to guess negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit is probably... Okay. Oh. Okay. So it's the same thing, right? Don't think that... It says it's also effective up to plus 20 degrees centigrade, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I think only if you're not moving. Otherwise, you're going to overheat. I feel like that's the case. You really have to pull down the zipper for that. So, yes, I agree. This is fine for um, using as a city nomad and the natural explorer. Mm. Extreme cold or mild conditions, your comfort is the same. Okay, but not if you're super active. It just gets too warm. But I guess if it gets so warm, you have to unzip. I, I find that acceptable. Just not for extreme performance. Extreme performance where you're sweating it up. That. I think it's just <laughs> the insulation properties are just way too good. So the heat's coming from within. It's going to be too much. Okay, so the four-layer insulation system that they're talking about has Teflon, all right? Fully tested that outdoors as far as under the rain. So 10K waterproof. Now, if you are doing some really high advanced technical snowboarding out in the Arctic and stuff, the waterproof ratings typically start at 20,000, 25,000, 30,000, maybe even up to 40,000. 
But when you get up that high, you lose a little bit of the breathability. So I think this is a nice middle ground for an for something that is for around you wear it around a city or just general nature exploring, maybe a short hike, right? Not like backpack or anything like that. And then it's got the aerogel insulation, one millimeter, super thin. I don't know if that's enough, but with how expensive this is and how effective the gel is, probably that's part of the reason why all obviously all four of these things work together to keep the temperatures keep the temperatures at a nice, warm, comfortable level, right? So it's got Serona insulation, so it's lightweight, eco-friendly, okay? And then it's got the graphene technology that enhances warmth and churn comfort in frigid uh, conditions. And I do believe that is that whole gold section in the middle of the jacket. That's key. Okay, here's where it works. Explain how it's better than a goose down. Yes, I could see that. But if you have some sort of hybrid situation going on, I think what makes the big difference with this is if you ha try to do something with similar performance to the Al Pargali puffer jacket, but with goose down, okay, the goose down is going to be completely useless once you sweat it out or in the rain, right? You got to combine the goose down with a bunch of other technologies too, as well, to get to that level. However, the point is that then you'll have a much puffier jacket like really puffy and it's going to look like you're hiking every day <laughs> which is not necessarily the best look depending on how the fashion cycle is going the cycle of fashion i feel like puffer jackets are coming back now where you see that is clearly you're wearing a down jacket as opposed to ones that's a little bit more incognito and that's what the alpargali puffer jacket is it's more incognito rather than make you look like you're out for a hike and I think that's the point of this is that with the technologies of Alpargali, if you get try to get a similar type of performance with the down jacket, number one, you probably couldn't without a bunch of other technologies. Number two, it's also going to weigh a lot more, at least insulation wise. So that's what they're saying. Okay, so there's some other benefits there. Aerogel designed for durability. And they have some crazy tests for the liquid nitrogen spray test. That's pretty nuts. I don't know how they made it so that it didn't damage the exterior of the jacket, or maybe they're just trying to point out that, look, it's not getting through to the rows, so it's not going to freeze the rows. I don't know. I think that's what that is. Yeah, the insulation technology is amazing. So here, the graphene, it's in the center of the back. It's this whole gold portion. Is graphene really gold? No, I don't think so. I think this is more of a marketing thing. So you can see that there is definitely something special there. And let me tell you, it really stands out when you just hold up the jacket because that is immediately what caught my eye as well. And it reflects the heat back to you. So uh, another uh, company that starts with a C also has a similar type of reflective technology, but they are not using graphene, just using some sort of reflective technology. Another part that I guess a lot of people don't appreciate as much as they should is about the anti-static piece. This jacket really was anti-static. And I didn't really consider that until I put on a sweater later. And as I'm taking off the sweater, just a lot of static electricity came out. And why is this a problem? It really is an, oh, mostly a problem if, you, if you're in a really dry environment and you're afraid of electrostatic shock, either uh, yourself or against um, others or other electronic devices. That's something that is, I guess that's, that should be added probably counted as one of the 30 some features in there. So they're showing you the locking and warmth. I can attest to that. It is way freaking warm. And then now they're talking about Sonora insulation, high performance biopolymer. And it's 117 grams of it. And it is super soft. And I agree. I really feel like it felt better than the than a down jacket, particularly because the I guess it it's got to be these designs here. This stands fiber with 3D spiral design. How down clumps up in an area after a while, especially if you sweat a lot, which makes it less effective. We get it wet or you wash it, and then it becomes less effective. And there's some way that you got to try to repoof the, the down. That probably is going to happen with this because this is built with plant fibers. It's plant-based in part. 
30 some percent. We shall see. It's really early to say. I haven't washed jacket yet, but apparently it's machine washable. Now, what I'm really curious to know is how well this performs after a couple of washes and whether or not the waterproofness sticks around or not, or whether or not you got to use the special wash. That's something that I'm curious about. And I guess it's going to be one of those questions I'm going to actually ask in the comments of the system here. Okay, so Teflon fabric, 10K waterproof. You got the snowproof, you got the windproof part, all covered. Dirt proof, I haven't tested yet. The jacket looks fine. I, I haven't been in very dirty environments, so that's really tough to say. So they recommend this for your daily use, global explanation, hiking, business, outdoor adventures, uh, winter sports. No. That's a no. And this guy's not doing winter sports either. Um, you're not going to be wearing this snowboarding. I mean, you could, but it's just way... Okay, there's just not enough ventilation in the armpit area. I'll just say that right now. It's got the mesh, all right? And I see the mesh in there, and it's the very similar mesh that you see on advanced backpacks that they have to help cushion off the sweat. But... You still need ventilation to get through in that area, and there's no external zips in there. But once you add external zips on here, it becomes a much more technical jacket, and then it doesn't feel like it's appropriate for regular outdoor type of activity for business or daily commute. That puts in a whole t totally different category, I feel. Now, I did check out a lot, of the, a lot of the pockets. I think there are almost too many pockets for me. They claim you can hide an iPad in there, but it's probably an iPad mini. The pocket's quite large. I don't think it'd be super comfortable to wear and stuff up everything in there, but it does have a lot of unique features. Part of it is the interior section that is right here. It's supposed to be a hidden compartment, but it's really easy to see once you open up the zippers because it's sticking like out right there, at least in the example that I was testing, but does make it a lot more pickpocket proof. And also because it's got RFID blocking technology in there already built in. So if you are traveling with only a few cards, you might want to put it in there because it'll block the RFID and you should not accidentally get your card information stolen by an RFID type of sniffer that sniffs out payment cards. All right, so you got the five external pockets, try it all of them. I am generally not using all of those type of pockets, but it's great to have. Interior left pocket large enough for an iPad. Not my iPad Pro, but look at this guy. This guy pulls out a big iPad. And you know what? That's something I have to try, but I don't have an iPad that, I don't know. I, I, that's something I'm going to have to try. Not that I would. I think that the way the... Pockets are loaded. If you fill all the stuff up, it's not going to be very comfortable. Just because it's there doesn't mean you should, but you could. So why would this be important? If you are traveling and you have way too many things and now the airlines are enforcing a strict like two bag policy, right? Southwest Airlines carry on two bag policy. You can carry on your iPad in there. <laughs> or mini notebook or something, just st stuff it in there and wear it through. That doesn't count against you. Wearing a jacket does not count against you, and that is a benefit. This is why I have certain jackets that have a lot of pockets that I could easily do that with. So that's why it's there, in my opinion. Okay. All right, 3M Reflective Print, that is on the back of the hood. It's basically the name brand, Alpargali, so that does reflect behind you. It's got a silver metallic silver logo up there on the top right hand side and also the silver reflective part right here on the left arm where your transit card is also going to be put in there and while well, there's cuff gloves they don't even show off the cuff gloves in these pictures yet this is a draft kickstarter since this goes live tomorrow there will be more information uh, about that and hopefully yeah i'll try out that and also try out the uh, ipad as well oh there we go right here okay that's what they mean I got it now. Okay. Maybe that is in the jacket. So that does give you a little bit more, more protection. It's not a full glove, but it does give you more protection. I understand now. Okay. There's a bunch of partners on here. 
There's two colors. All right, so I have the Midnight Black. It's probably going to be the most popular color. You definitely don't stand out, but I can see how Sandstorm could be a nice alternative choice for most people if you don't want to wear regular black. Black, you will stand out in the snow, and the lighter color, I feel like, looks a little bit more special because there's less whiter color out there. And also, maybe any anybody else who just wants a lighter choice can be can select that now they have these other jackets graphene lightweight jacket i think this is what they mean by the thin and light and the graphene vest also thin and light that basically just keeps that whole warm middle section there and i think that i think if you have at least that technology that should be pretty good Although looking at these pictures, I feel like something a little bit more form-fitting would be more beneficial. But it's great for layering. I get it. Now, I haven't tried those on. There are some add-ons that are going on. So you can choose adding on the Aerogel Puffer. That is the middle section. Or the Graphene Lightweight Jacket. And for super early bird prices, pretty good. All right, so here's some more bit about the design. And then there's a sizing guide here as well. Now, I do believe I got a medium, but I'm not sure. I can only tell you that since I normally wear a medium-sized jacket, it fits just fine, just like any other medium jacket that I have on there. Now, here's the shipping charge for these jackets. Starts at $19 for the United States. And goes all the way up to $35 if you get all three. And it looks like worldwide delivery is going to happen in January 2025. So while it won't make it to you if you're thinking about giving this away for Christmas, you'll be ready for the rest of the winter season in starting through January. Now this is their second campaign. It's very likely, especially since I am, have been wearing the sample for a couple weeks now, that this jacket is ready to go by the time that they ship in January. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that even though Kickstarter says, hey, there's no 100% guarantees, I'm quite sure you're going to get this jacket. So if you're interested in this jacket, if you have any other questions about the puffer jacket, in particular the black one, please let me know down below and I'll, ha I'll be happy to try it out and give you guys an idea about about what's going on what your questions are and do any more tests if you would like let me know comment down below and again if you are interested in backing this please use my link this way they know that them sending out a jacket to me was a great idea so that all my audience members get a chance to, and all my viewers, all my valuable viewers, get a chance to find out about this great jacket. And if you are in the San Francisco Bay Area and you want to try out this jacket, feel free to message me. I'd be happy to let you try out my medium jacket. All right, thanks for watching. Happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. And I'll catch you in the next video. One thing that is certain for me about this jacket is that it is way too warm for me when I am actively doing something. This is not appropriate for bike riding. Definitely not something that I want to wear when it is 60 some degrees outside and I'm actively moving.